Welcome to Capacity Middle East Extra, powered by JSA. I'm Dean Perrine of JSA, and we are coming to you live. That's right, Judy. We are absolutely live right now from the beautiful Grand Hyatt Dubai for Capacity Middle East. And I'm here with my new best friend, Miss <laughs> Judy Nguru. Did I get that right, Judy? Yes, you did. Yes, Ju you did. Excellent. Judy is the Senior Vice President of Strategic Development at Raxio Data Centers. Judy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. It's great to be here. I'm really excited about being part of the conference. And yeah, and talking about diversity and inclusion. And of course, more about data center companies in Africa. Yeah, yeah. So before we get into some of the DNI stuff, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about Raxio? So yes, um, Raxio is a data center company. We are head office is here in Dubai. We have seven markets in Africa. Uh, first facility is operational in Uganda. We have another facility that is uh, probably going to be commissioned by Q3 to this year mm -hmm. in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa. Oh, then cool. we have three other markets that are coming up at the same time, which is Mozambique in Maputo, DRC in Kinshasa, and Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire. And then finally, last year we announced Tanzania, and we are hoping that that will also be ready sometime mid-2024. And lastly, Luanda in Angola. So, yeah. Wow, so you got a little bit of stuff going on right now, yes, huh? Yes, 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 <laughs> we do. We are a carrier neutral tier three facility. We're usually the first to market. Um, we then usually know other facilities of our kind, of our scale in this market. And that's why we proceed to venture and grow into data centers all over Africa. I love it. Congratulations on all of the uh, expansion that you have going on. But let's get right down to it. Okay. Um, because, Judy, I, I think it's safe to say that I have not met anyone like you. Oh, wow, uh, thank and, you. And, 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 maybe, and maybe that's a problem. Uh, and, and, and that's what I want to talk about, okay. uh, so the diversity and inclusion. Yeah. So um, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about, I mean, as an executive within the, the greater technology industry, what yeah. it has been like. Well, number one, what, maybe talk a little bit about what brought you to the data center and technology industry and what it has been like for you uh, kind of growing as a female within the yeah. industry. Yeah. So my background kind of started in fiber infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, so I started working on a project. It was in the U.S. under the Obama administration. We were putting together an application to build Metro Fiber in the city of Philadelphia. And that was kind of like the taste of technology for me. Um, fast forward, I moved back to Africa. I came back to Kenya and uh, started a project at home, again, centered around technology. Didn't pan out, but then ended up moving to Uganda. And then while I was in Uganda, I found out about Project Link, which was a fiber infrastructure project that was being run by Google and joined the company and uh, worked with them from when it was still a project to when it became an independent business called mm -hmm. C-squared. Um, that's when I really learned about the infrastructure space in Africa and the fact that um, it's a huge gap, you know, especially on middle mile, last mile. And additionally, that we need about 700 data centers across the market. Mm -hmm. That came when I joined Raxio. Now, as an executive sitting in, 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 you know, in that space, what I came to realize is that in the top leadership, there's still a huge gap in terms mm -hmm. of representation from women. Mm -hmm. you know, I was lucky when I was at, uh, working at C-Squared Project Link. I had women leaders. You know, we had our, ge our general manager, Susan Kiteriko, was running the project. I learned a lot from her. You know, she was kind of my inspiration as to, you know, you can break this glass ceiling. You uh -huh. can be a leader. You can... Um, you know, drive the direction of a company. And of course, so that made me ambitious enough to pursue those kind of roles. And I encourage other women to do so, you know, don't limit yourself. I think women tend to be overthinkers. Um, when we check the scale, if you, if you see a job description for a senior executive, we want to make sure we meet 100%. Yeah. They say men tend to only look at 40%, and if they can meet 40%, they will apply for the role. Mm -hmm. So I encourage women to, you know, break the boundaries, get out of their comfort zone and pursue these roles because they are there. And I, I feel when, even when I'm hiring, I find that I don't get as many female applicants as I would like, even from a strategic partnership role, market analyst role. Mm -hmm. I don't get that. So I would like to see more of that. So. Let's talk a little bit about why you don't. I mean, you, you did you did mention you know uh, women feel like generally speaking they, they feel like they have to they have to meet a hundred percent of all of the expectation or all of the qualifications rather. Yes. Um, so what what do we do? What do we do now? How do we how do we um, encourage women like yourself to to take that chance to to take that leap of faith, if you will, and mm -hmm. and apply for those jobs? Yeah. 
I think one of the things you should is change your mindset, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I know it sounds easy to say and hard to do, but yeah. it's a step forward. Uh, if you meet 60 or 70 percent and you feel you're lacking on the 30 percent or 40 percent, tell yourself how you can achieve that while you're in the role, you know, <laughs> use that as a bargaining power to get uh, hired in those jobs that are being advertised, you know, talk to the employer, show what you can contribute, because what happens, women can overcompensate, you know, we can, we will put more out than is re required of us, you know, mm -hmm. and use that and sell yourself, you know, you, the only person who can market you is you, mm -hmm. you know, no one else can do it for you. So you really need to kind of get out of that shell uh, and just take a leap of faith and have confidence in yourself that you can deliver and they, the, the employer is willing to listen. They're always willing to listen and, they, and they'll be wowed by what you have to offer. Amazing. So uh, you and I had the luxury of actually speaking for probably 30, 45 minutes prior to this, to this interview, which yeah. is great. Honestly, we could have probably talked to two or or more hours. Yeah. Um, but you've had a lot of, uh, of strong, uh, inspiring women yeah. in your life. What would you say to someone who is you from, let's say, a decade, maybe two decades uh, hmm. ago? What would you say to that person who might be watching right now? <laughs> um, I think what I would tell them, one, is trust your instincts. You know, they'll never fail you. Um, and also encourage each other. So one, I think sometimes we tend to not talk about this with women, but we're a competitive species, mm -hmm. all right? And so we always want to kind of try and see how we can outperform each other. But there's, there's beauty in collectivism. So if we help and each other grow, you know, we will achieve more. So what I would tell a you, a me, 20 years ago, yeah. is um, lean on your network, create a strong network around yourself because that's what's going to propel you to a greater future you know those are the people who will when they're thinking about uh you know um, um uh, a role at a board you know and they've seen how you work they know mm -hmm, how you perform mm -hmm. your name is what is going to ring in their heads and you're the person who's going to get recommended for those kind of roles right so and you do that by creating that network of people you do that by communicating by exposing yourself you will not get identified if you're sitting at home or if you're sitting at the office or behind the desk just doing your day to day i honestly encourage bravery i we, we we tend to be a shy species we tend to be more reserved but you know we have a voice we have to speak up and i think that's what we're seeing more and more in, in as as time goes by we're seeing more women step up come up encourage other women you know capacity me has this platform today the mm -hmm. jsa to talk about women issues gender issues you know and that's great. That's how it starts. We need just to keep going. Can't stop now. <laughs> if you are not inspired by those words, then you probably don't have a heartbeat right now. Judy, <laughs> fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. You bet. And thank you viewers for watching JSA at Capacity Middle East Extra in Dubai. We'll see you soon.